you know, as far as your, the people you're going to face, I'm concerned, uh, two guys who have run under 13, Solinsky's out, and, and Matt says he's going to run on the run the 10,000. Um, and Galen's going to be coming back from the 10,000, but he's, but it's, you know he seems to be a serious doubler at this point, and he seems to be recovered pretty well. Do you do you think it's quite likely that he's going to be your major competition in this race? Oh, definitely, yeah. he's going to be. And you know, I'm not ruling out about you know right now, just out of you know just by using my fingers here, I can see around four people that I, I know and I've just put in my head that you know these are the people that I really need to race against yeah. and I'm taking them seriously yeah. I'm, I'm, every day I train I just have to think about these guys and if I don't do that I'll be you know going there and not prepared so I just want to prepare now in training I know we have Lopez Lamont who ran a great race, a great race in uh, Stanford 13-11 yeah. yeah. we have Gaylord Drop you know running in you know, running recently, a great race, and yeah. a, you know, PB, right. and then we have David Torrance, if he chooses yeah. to run the 1500, I mean, the 5000, then yeah. you know, we have a lot of people in there, you know, who knows, maybe even uh, Andy Bumbleau might yeah. decide, hey, I've got different training now, training with Lopez, and you know, just go harder, and then, so that, that is the race that I have to, those are the guys that I need to be prepared for. As far as Lopez goes, I mean, does it surprise you a guy who, you know, he's an 800 guy and then 1500 guy, does it surprise you that, that he can make that quick of a, well, I guess he's run 3000 indoors with you, actually. Yes. Yeah. And actually, it's not, you know, he went cross country at NAU. And, yeah. and so people does not know his background, really. His background has been, you know, he's a long distance guy, he runs cross country, like the way I did in college. But him, he had more strength, and so yeah. he could even go up to the 800 meters. Right. And, the race in the middle was the 1500. So sometimes the race in the middle might not be your race. Yeah. And then suddenly I think this is where he's comfortable and I think this is his race now, the 5000 meters. If you ask me, then I would say, you know what, is he good in the 15? I would say yes, but then is he great in the five? Which which race is much uh, suited for him? I would say five thousand. You know the way that they're taking, they're picking. The, I mean, there's some people who think that the race in Oslo for the Ethiopians was pretty much the trial, and I think the Kenyans had a similar race. What ends up happening is, I mean, I don't know who they're going to take, take, name. Sometimes you hear they're going to pick two and then have a description third person. But you're going to get some very young people who maybe have only had a couple of fast races. They're not like veteran, you know, they haven't run a lot of fast races. Would you be, would you fancy your chances against, you know, a rookie with one one good race to his credit, you know, rather than some, you know, veteran who's pretty consistent? I would go for the veteran who is consistent. Yeah. Um, the guys who are... Do you think you would have a better chance? Yeah, yes, yes, absolutely. The veteran has a better chance yeah. because sometimes, you know, when you have these uh, rounds, for yeah. example, in the 5,000 you have two rounds, semi-finals yeah. and the finals. Yeah. Sometimes a rookie could just feel good, like, leading into the, gem the, the games or the uh, yeah. race. And then, you know what, he cannot run or, you know, the, the, the next run, you know, the, yeah. the finals. Yeah. And so, but the veteran knows how to channel those energy, not to use it all, run tactical yeah. and actually use the first race as, as an opening thing. You know, you open your legs up, you know, you just kind of uh, feel relaxed, you feel like you're in a race, preparing mentally, using this race. And then in the finals, that's it. That's what you've been waiting for. And then that's why um, the most experienced athletes, I can tend to have advantage over the others, the, the new ones. Between this race and, and, and the trials, which is still a, a ways, what, what is your training going to be like? Are you going to go back up to Flagstaff? No, I'll be in Tucson. As a matter of fact, um, you know, I feel like I've done, like I said, you know, done a lot of uh, the base work, the good endurance workouts. So now the next thing that I go in Tucson, that I'm going to do in Tucson, is just do more of the truck sessions that I have not been doing. I haven't done yeah. a lot of that, yeah. and mostly the speed workouts. So I need to do that, and I'll be ready. The speed workouts for you mean 400, 800 type or 400, or and also stuff? go into like the harder stuff, like going into the 1200s, um, mm -hmm. sometimes even one mile repeat on the track. Yeah. Um, I hardly do that kind of stuff, but you know, this part of the things we're going to be doing for that, you know, about 14 days before I go to Eugene. Does it matter if you do it? Or does it matter if you do it in spikes or not? Oh, no, it doesn't matter. I, in fact, that most of that long stuff I do on my flats. Okay. But as long as coach gives me a time that I know, you know, this is hard to get, you know, right. if I'm doing the 1200s and I'm just going out all, you know, my, my flats, doing a little under three minutes is good, you know, and so when I, when, if I'm in spikes, I will go for a little faster, so I'll do that kind of stuff. Right. Did you want to ask? Yeah, yeah. we're going to the Korean also, uh, also have had these incredible race, we had 15 guys, 
354 or better. <laughs> that guy's running 354 and placing 15. What's the sport <laughs> coming to? You know what? That means the sport is getting better. And these young guys are learning that, you know what, you know, that for you to get the best results, you have to run like one. Like that athlete who is ready, who is not afraid to just go there and, and, and fight hard. And suddenly we saw that at Free Fontaine in Classic, I was number 14, then I ran 354. Yeah, it you know, it's, it yeah. was like, wow. Back in the day, you know, it could be like, well, the winner was 351, and then yeah. well, 356 was the third place. But then people are, people are actually running fast. And I think they, uh, at the point where they believe that, you know, they can run against the best, and it's suddenly that's the best part. You know, I like, I, li I like being, I mean, seeing it, that from when I was running, things have really changed. I've seen the changes myself. Um, you know, with these young guys coming in there and then challenging. We have a guy from Djibouti, you know, or really called Djibouti. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, suddenly he ran 3.30 in Angola, and then, and it doesn't surprise me because he's seeing people like Aspel Kiprop and all these guys just running hard, and, you know, they just want to be with them, challenge them. And those are the guys that, you know, I cannot even mess with them right now. Those are guys are really tough, so. Yeah. But if they come back to the 5,000, come down to 5,000, then I'll teach them a lesson or two. Bernard, with all this, this great depth, and all the, the, the gurus of world records uh, on shaky ground, are they going to go sometime soon? No. No? <laughs> Those things are hard. Yeah. You know, well, you have to look also at the, uh, the history since the Shisha Mel Goes ran all those 326s, 27s, 28. Well, since he retired, we can just see a few people that have run under 3,000. So, mm -hmm. for them to get into 327s, so you first of all have to develop to get used to running 29s almost, you know, three times in, in your season. But it doesn't happen often. So, by the time you make that big leap to, to get that 326 would be something else. Yeah. So, I believe, and the same thing with that 3,000 meter world for the 720, those are the records that might be there for, for a while. Including, like, the mile record, you know, 343. That's yeah. So insane. That's insane. So you know, we see like the best race now is like 348 or 349, yeah. but yeah. it's just way up there. So it's going to take a long, long, long time. Bernard, this is not related to that, but uh, in three years you're going to be 40, meaning you're like a master. Yes, Only I'm that. a master now. Some people do start at 35. Uh, nobody's ever broken four outdoors. Yes, they have. They just did it. Yeah. Andy yeah. Wyman broke it last week. Uh, oh, yeah, last oh, week. Uh, Anthony Wyman. And he ran 358. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, no problem. Yeah. And he ran 358, and uh, that's inspiring. Are you going to continue with technology in your 40s? You know, I, I hope I can do that, but you know, I would like to run into road races, maybe. Uh, I want to see, you know, Abdi has been telling me, Kip, you can do great road races. Yeah. He's been the one encouraging me to get into that right. part. And um, you know, I told him, you know, you've been my training partner, and to give you something, you know, I'm going to run with you in the road races when I'm done running in a track. So I could be 40, but still be something else, doing something else. You've said that you, um, I, th I think, if I'm not mistaken, you said that you're going to be competing at this level for through 2013. Right? Yes. You want to go to the World Championships. Yes. Now, is that just because of one more chance to represent the United States, or do you have this burning desire to run in Moscow, or what exactly is the, um, is the reasoning? It's actually a combination of both. Uh, yeah. There's one thing that I want to do for myself. I just want to see how what I can do. Yeah. I know it's, it's getting harder as I go forward, yeah. but then um, I just want to have that desire to, to go and represent the country. Yeah. At the same time, I also want to see how well I can still perform uh, mm -hmm. next year. So, yeah. but. Before I jump into next year, I just want to see what I can do now. Because, right. you know, if I go to the Olympics and then I get dusted really bad by the young guys, yeah. then I would be like, I have to reconsider my, my options for next year. So yeah. I really have to be, uh, you know, I have to take it seriously one at a time. And Olympics suddenly is the one that is occupying my mind now. And all my thoughts, my preparation, everything. I sleep and wake up thinking about it.